thanks, Josh. I'll just start sharing my screen, hopefully. Oh no, which one's screen one and which one's screen two? I always get the problem. Okay, I think that's the right one there. Uh, share. Okay, could someone, Ed, could you give me a heads up if you can see that okay? Yep. Yeah, Excellent. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, uh, first challenge over. Um, so uh, thank you everyone uh, for attending. Uh, my name is Andrew Wilson from the University of St Andrews uh, up in uh, relatively sunny Scotland today uh, and I'm joined by uh, Ed Silverton from uh, Nemo Seed as well. Uh, and today we're really uh, going to talk about Exhibit. Uh, it's been a bit of a labour of love of ours probably for the last uh, for the last year now. Uh, so we're just going to maybe do a demo of it and talk a wee bit about how it came about. Uh, so, um, so first of all, uh, really uh, a bit about the University of St Andrews. We've got uh, a vast collection. We've been collecting since 1314, I think it is, or, or something like over 600 years of collected now. Uh, so we have an awful lot of content. Uh, lots and lots of it's digitised. Uh, we also were meant to open a revamp museum last, uh, last year. Uh, and uh, a lot of our uh, content, a lot of our collections is used in teaching at the university. So whether that's manuscripts of medieval history, old rare books for, uh, for classics in English, or even uh, old rock samples for geology. Uh, it's used quite heavily across, uh, across a lot of our subjects at the university. Um, so when COVID hit last year, we kind of had, uh, we already had an inkling that a lot of our museum engagement is going to change to be online and it kind of drove that forward uh, uh, a lot faster. Um, so when we when COVID hit last year, uh, we were kind of slightly in crisis mode and we're like, well, how can we even begin to replicate this in-person teaching experience of when you get to hold a 600 year old manuscript for the first time or sniffing the inside of a binding of a rare book. I mean, it's such a, a, a malleable kind of sensory experience. Uh, how do you even go about really even replicating that online? So we started to have a think about what we could do with that. Uh, the other side of it was that uh, we kind of had an inkling for the museum that we have a lot of things in glass cabinets. How, what can we do with maybe things like an iPad in front of a glass cabinet to try and point people to, to the things that we want them to see uh, inside uh, an exhibition? Uh, and also we kind of think one of the challenges of being a small museum other part of the university is uh, across Scotland, a lot of small museums, uh, how could other people maybe use some of the things that we want to come up with uh, cheaply uh, as well? Uh, so what we came up with with uh, Ed uh, is Exhibit. Uh, so Exhibit is a, a, a IIIF powered uh, Storytelling tool, I guess, is the best way to say it. Uh, you can take IIIF resources from across uh, anywhere you can basically find a IIIF resource and add them to other IIIF resources to start to uh, narrate and tell a story. Uh, they can present it sort of end to end, sort of left to right, right, left to right sequentially, or they could be uh, sort of uh, top to bottom sort of scrolling telling. I'll show them both in a wee while. Uh, the, the sort of the, the crux of the thing is uh, based around uh, annotations. So um, the, the general gist of it is that you add your triple IF uh, item and then you can zoom, you can pan, uh, and then when you've got to the exact position that you want to actually annotate, you add a quick annotation and then you pan and zoom add another one, maybe move on to another item. Uh, so uh, this works with all IIIF images, and it also works with uh, 3D models uh, as well. Um, so it was a way for us to really sort of think about teaching and try and at least move things on uh, online. Uh, so uh, the use cases for this were uh, uh, lecturers could make exhibits based on 3D objects um, or 2D objects and really tell a story to their students. Alternatively, uh, we could set assignments to the students to actually go away and annotate objects uh, that we have in the collection. Um, so the actual uh, software itself uh, was funded by the Esme Fairbound Foundation. Uh, and one of our goals was to uh, try and widen access to this. So uh, make it freely available so uh, anyone could use, uh, could use the tool. Uh, I'm gonna hand you over now to Ed to talk about some of the nitty gritty of it. Okay, so um... Some people may know me from uh, the Universal Viewer projects. I've been working on that for many years now. So, um, you know, St. Andrews were already using the Universal Viewer on their sort of catalog pages. So um, when thinking about this project, we thought it made sense to uh, use the Universal Viewer and leverage its um, 
existing uh, 3D support and uh, multi-image support. So, uh, you know, the ability to show uh, multiple pages of a, of, a, of a book or manuscript at once and uh, press previous and next to, to find precisely the, the page that, you, that you're interested in was an important factor uh, in that choice. Um, and we're using Google Model Viewer, which is a very nice open source uh, 3D model viewer uh, within the UV. Um, and uh, St. Andrews are compressing their 3D models using uh, Google's Draco compression, uh, which makes them load slightly faster. I think it takes about around about 10% off the file size usually. Um, and yeah, we, we can import, uh, because the UV supports um, collections as well, uh, or Manifesto supports collections, which is a library from the UV that we're using in Exhibit, uh, we can do interesting things with IIIF collections where we download multiple things at once. Um, and uh, this uh, last year, was it? Was it earlier this year the um, Exhibit has moved over to be part of the Universal Viewer project uh, in the large sort of thing. So it's, it's kind of going to be sustainable in the long term as well, um, much like the UV. Uh, next slide, please. So the annotation side of it, um, uh, behind the scenes, we're using uh, Google Firebase, uh, which is kind of built on top of Google Cloud. Uh, and it's a very, very fast kind of uh, JSON store, basically. Um, and it's so fast that you can do real-time uh, use cases with it. Um, so if two, if two people were um, working on an exhibit at once, they'd be able to see New, new annotations being added and reordered uh, in real time. Um, so we're using the uh, web annotation data model for the uh, picking out pieces of images to zoom in on. We're storing those uh, fragment selectors in the, in the database so that they can be replayed. Uh, and all we're storing really is a big load of annotations for every exhibit. And each annotation uses the part of property from the web annotation data model, which references the manifest that that annotation is referencing. So we're able to then use that part of to load, load the manifest in question. Um, uh, so that's fine for images, but with, uh, with 3D, uh, there's no existing real standard yet for uh, an equivalent kind of functionality for picking out part of a 3D model or uh, an orbit of a 3D model. Um, so uh, the 3D, I'm co-chair of the IIIF 3D community group and we're kind of working on getting towards that um, at the moment. So hopefully in some time in the future, we'll have a standard for that. And I think that's my bit there on the technical bit. Wonderful. Okay, I'm gonna try and do a demo live. This is always going to go wrong. So apologies in advance. Uh, so hopefully everyone can still see that. Uh, so uh, this is the Exhibit website. Uh, if you just go to exhibit.so, you'll be able to go to it and you can freely start to create exhibits uh, to your heart's content. Uh, so what I'll do, I'm going to quickly show you one and then we'll throw ourselves into maybe quickly creating one as well, uh, just based on St. Andrew's content, although I'll show you how you can obviously add content from anywhere. Uh, so uh, I'll just go down to one here. Uh, this is still one of our kind of uh, first ones I think we ever we ever properly pieced together. Um, so what you see on the, on the page is basically Universal Viewer. Uh, and you see that it keeps all of its metadata from the whatever IIIF manifest comes across. And you can do all the usual sort of triple IF, uh, sorry, all the usual universal viewer things to that. Um, over the top, you've got sort of an intro slide, a description of what you're about to look at. There is an option to duplicate. So uh, if you, it's, it's a bit like forking in GitHub. So you can actually take kind of pre existing exhibit and uh, change it and uh, create your own version of it if you wanted. Uh, and the way this works is uh, for this one anyway, uh, it is just. Uh, a left to right. So what this was done, it was it started with one uh, IIIF resource, a book, I think from Library Congress, and I think this one still is. And you can see there's, uh, you get a description at the top. So this is uh, the annotation that's been added. It's about Jane Austen, this one. And you can see it basically zooms in uh, to various places on the page, it has more information, uh, and it kind of just keeps zooming around with annotations on it. Uh, again, some information about her signature there. 
Then what it will do, it will go load up something else. So this is a manuscript from the Bodleian, I think. Uh, and it's, this is Jane Austen's earliest work. Uh, and as usual, you can see, it's got some translation there as a block quote, and it kind of just sort of scans around all the different pages and, and loads of content up, annotated. I think now we have jumped over to a photograph from our photographic collection of Jane Austen's holiday home, maybe. Um, and uh, you see, we've just got a bit of zooming going on there. Then I think it's going to load up a 3D model, fingers crossed. Uh, so this is a 3D model of Jane Austen's writing desk. Uh, it might just take a second if I'm sharing my screen. Ah, there we go, perfect. Uh, it's quite a big model, this one. Uh, so you can see, uh, and this is the beauty of, of, of this, is that uh, when you're making your exhibit, you can pan, you can zoom, and you, you're pinpointing exactly what you want your audience to see, and it remembers that position. So it might look a wee bit weird over when I'm sharing my screen with Zoom. Sometimes it looks a bit jumpier than, than it does uh, in real life. I promise in real life it's really smooth. Uh, so for example, this one, it starts in this position, We've then spat around to see the back of it, and then again with a quote on it. We've then sort of having a look above it, and then it's kind of spinning around uh, to see it from that position as well. Um, and basically, this this one's quite a long exhibit, so I will uh, keep on. Uh, oh, uh, oh, there we go. Uh, so uh, I won't keep going with that, but that that's basically what an exhibit looks like while it's in. Um, in, in that format, which is our traditional left to right format. And I'll show you a, a scroll one in a wee while. Um, so uh, on the exhibit website, you can see some other ones or you can create a new one. Uh, there's a few ways to create a new one. So uh, when you click create there, it, you can just put in title, author, description, a rights field if you want. And there's a wee recapture check. Uh, so we don't uh, we don't end up using all of Ed's data and uh, bankrupting him. Uh, and then we go into uh, create exhibit. And because we didn't, um, because we didn't add any manifests this way, so what you can do with Exhibit, which is really great, is at the point of creation, you can feed it a manifest, a IIIF manifest, and it will create an exhibit with that manifest. Or you can create it a IIIF collection manifest, and you can feed it with those, uh, with those uh, that collection manifest, and it'll add all of those items ready for you to create an exhibit. So at the moment, we have nothing in here. If you did want to add something manually that way, you could add in a IIIF manifest URL there and click import. What I'm going to do is quickly show you how we've asked our students to do it and what our staff have done with our collections ourselves. So I'm just going to hop over here, and it's slightly, here's what I made earlier. Uh, so this is our collection site. Uh, we have lots of 3D models and uh, images and that kind of thing. And if I click on uh, one somewhere, I'll just click on this one here and hope this one works. Um, so we've got, uh, ignore the absolutely terrible image of this, we are slowly going through re-photographing everything we've got in our collection. Uh, but if I click on this, um, you will see this is just in our collection site. Uh, it should load the 3D object. Should load the 3D object. Ah, there we go. Uh, I may have chosen one that hasn't been potentially uh, <laughs> done very well uh, when it comes to compression. But anyway, so yeah, uh, so we've got our 3D object here, and you can see you can kind of zoom in and, and scroll around. But uh, what's brilliant about this is uh, there's two sections at the top here. We can either add that to a selection, so we've got a, a, a shopping basket selection where at the end of that, you could get a, a IIIF manifest collection uh, URL for it. Or you can, uh, in this case, we could add that directly to exhibit and that would create a new exhibit. So all this is doing is basically just feeding the uh, IIIF manifest uh, uh, URL into, uh, into exhibit. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to add it to the selection because I've magically created a selection a few minutes ago of absolute random stuff uh, from our catalog. Uh, so I've added lots of weird stuff here. And uh, in this case, uh, all I'm going to do is go to add to exhibit. And what this will do is uh, it will create a new exhibit. Uh, as you can see there, that is the manifest collection manifest URL. And uh, so my exhibit, uh, Andrew, and put that in there. I'm going to say I'm not an robot and I've read the terms and conditions and I'm going to create an exhibit. So uh, what I can do now, if I go to add item this time round, you can see I've got everything that was in my IIIF collection is now ready to use. And uh, so I'm just going to choose something. So I'll start with a 2D image. So if I click on the item and I click add item, 
it should load it on the right hand side. There it is. Uh, this is a really old badge script. Um, and all you have to do to actually create these annotations now is you just zoom in, you pad around, you go to exactly where you want, want to go. Um, so, uh, so we'll start with maybe something like that. We'll just say oh, overview of my manuscript. Uh, I am absolutely not an expert in anything to do with any of the content I'm about to say. So apologies if anyone knows what this is. I'm very, very sorry for absolutely ruining it. Um, so then maybe I'll zoom in and I'll say a bird. And maybe we just want to go somewhere down here and we'll say, I don't know, a horse. Um, what you have here is some of the usual sort of uh, rich text editing. So you can make things in different fonts, bold, block quote, uh, link out to things as well. So, you know, we could have that uh, bold and italics. Uh, and now I've finished with this one. So I'm going to move on to a different, a different uh, object. So this time I'll choose a sundial, which is, I think it's a 3D object of a sundial. And we'll just let that load. Excellent. Um, so now we've got the sundial up. So maybe we want to start it in this position here, side view of sundial. Uh, and then maybe we want the top, top. And then maybe we'll kind of zoom right in there. Maybe we'll go there. And we'll say dial and uh, maybe bottom here. And then maybe we'll just choose one more item uh, while we're here. So I will choose uh, this bottom one, which I think is a book, maybe. Hopefully, yes, excellent. So got a book here. I think this is just some partial pages from a book. So it's not actually presented in, in two up mode. I think this is just partials. But um, what we can do is we can zoom in here and we'll say photograph, uh, painting. Uh, zoom out maybe we'll maybe just go to one more page and we'll you know you could even if you wanted you could you could uh, uh just basically type all that out and, and uh, uh uh recite that but we'll just say to god in his sickness uh we'll maybe just go to about there um if uh, so in fact if i clicked on back onto something else if i went back to there you can see it just goes back to where it was so you can see see how it's going a tick uh, approves what you've just changed. What you can do is you can actually rearrange them. So uh, you could move those around. What, what we're very conscious of with, with Exhibit was uh, the user, interfa uh, user interface of UI. So uh, there's a lot of things with Tripwire that sometimes there's a, a slight high barrier to entry and we wanted to make sure that this was as easy to use by as many people as, as possible. Um, so let's say we've done our Exhibit. Uh, we have two options here. We have side by side. Or we can do it in scrolly telling, uh, which we, uh, which I will show in a second. So if I just do side by side and go preview, we'll see it should load up our introduction slide with the very first item that we've got on our uh, on our uh, exhibit. And then if we go next, you can see it zooms in slightly to the first position, and then it will zoom into the bird, zoom into my horse. It is now loading the sundial. It goes to the first position there. And then it goes to the position there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it will just go through what we have just created. Now, uh, what we added and finalized about three or four months ago was something called scrolly telling. So what this does is uh, we pinched this basically from the New York Times who's doing some amazing storytelling work. And what this does is a, a, a it's just a different view for the same information. So uh, what you have is uh, rather than doing it side by side, uh, you use your scroll and you can just scroll down the page. So if I start to scroll, it will bring up the next annotation. It'll zoom in a bit and I zoom scroll more. It'll bring up the next one uh, and it'll bring, and it will just keep doing that. Uh, it works on mobile. So uh, if it's on mobile, the annotations in, uh, like uh, sort of slightly transparent in front of the, the whole screen. And you can see you can kind of just kind of go around like that. Um, so uh, once you're finished, you can click share and we have no authentication at the moment. So the way this works is a bit like Google in some respects, you've got an editing URL that you need to keep safe and you've got a view URL. If you copy that and then share that with people, uh, uh, that's uh, and you can share that with everyone. Uh, alternatively, you can embed in iframe. So we've embedded in some exhibits in our VLE as well. Uh, right, so I am going to, uh, Go back to this presentation. And so can I have to 
cut you off in just just a minute here because we got to keep moving. Um, so maybe last bit here. Sure. Okay. Uh, no problem at all. Uh, what I'll do then, I'll swing over to Ed, who can quickly talk about some of the recent developments. So, uh, next slide, please. <laughs> um, oh, the previous slide. Sorry. Uh, so we, yeah, we we did a workshop for the Digital Cultures Conference, um, where we, you know, helped uh, people do some creative storytelling. Uh, uh, recently, that's a re uh, next slide. Um, this is a Bright Brighton Festival uh, exhibition that we uh, collaborated with um, MOOP on, Museum of Ordinary People, and uh, this is their site, and they've embedded um, exhibits in iframes on their site. And uh, if you go to the next slide quickly, um, we made these cards for them, so they've got QR codes on them that link in the physical exhibit that link to the digital stories for those objects and uh, there's a video but uh, the, 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 the slides will be available afterwards. Hi thank you both yeah I think sorry to, to end it there but we have a limited number of uh, hosts who can start the next session so that's why we got to be um, kind of on no it time. but no, no, that's um, no problem. but uh, I will say that the chat is is great on the Whova platform and that's a great place to share links and share the slides um, so uh, really, really amazing stuff. I'll say on the AAAF side, this has proven very useful in terms of training and showing people how this works. So just love, love to see it. Thank you, Andrew and Ed. Um, and yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna see you at the rest of the sessions and, and this one and, and keep moving through the day. Thanks so much for coming. Bye -bye. Cheers everyone. Thank you. Bye.